embarking on a new exploration of the mystical parallels between the ancient texts of Eridu and Genesis, we delve further into the enigmatic connections that bind these narratives. In this revisitation, we unearth fresh revelations, shedding light on divine councils, remorseful deities, and the intricate instructions for building the Ark. We witness the flight of birds as messengers of hope and the establishment of a rainbow covenant. As our journey nears its culmination, prophecies of the future beckon, hinting at cyclical patterns that shape the destiny of humanity. Join us once more as we delve deeper into the secrets that bridge these ancient tales, revealing hidden truths that resonate across time and cultures. Divine Councils Both texts describe gatherings of heavenly beings, the Sumerian Anunnaki and the Hebrew Elohim, deciding the fates of humanity. Through these cosmic assemblies, gods determine destinies and establish divine laws. 1. In the Hebrew Bible, the concept of a divine council is seen in passages such as Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 and Genesis chapter 3 verse 22, where God speaks in the plural form, indicating the presence of other divine beings. Some scholars have interpreted this as a reference to a council of divine beings who participate in decision-making processes. In Job chapter 1 verse 6 and Job chapter 2 verse 1, there is a scene in which sons of God present themselves before God, suggesting a divine council gathering. 2. Similarly, the Eridu Genesis Tablet, an ancient Sumerian text, also describes a divine council. This tablet narrates the creation of the world and the decision-making process among the gods. The assembly of gods in the Eridu Genesis tablet discusses matters such as the creation of humans, the appointment of kingship, and the decision to bring about a flood as a means of destroying humanity. 3. The parallel between these accounts lies in depicting divine beings gathering together to deliberate and make decisions regarding creation, human affairs, and divine governance. The Hebrew Bible and the Eridu Genesis tablet reflect the idea that gods or divine beings exist in a council-like structure, participating in discussions and making choices that impact the world and humanity. Divine Restraint and Regret The parallels between the Hebrew Bible, specifically the Book of Genesis, and the Eridu Genesis tablet are often discussed concerning the concepts of divine restraint and regrets. The Eridu Genesis Tablet is an ancient Mesopotamian text that contains an account of the creation of the world and the subsequent divine actions. 1. Divine Restraint In the Eridu Genesis Tablet, the god Enki, also known as Ea, advises the god Enlil to exercise restraint and not destroy humanity when they become too noisy and disruptive. Enlil heeds Enki's advice and instead chooses to send a flood to reduce humanity's numbers. Similarly, in the book of Genesis, God shows restraint and decides not to eradicate all of humanity despite their wickedness. Instead, God chooses to send a flood to cleanse the earth. Divine Regrets In both texts, the deities experience a sense of regret or sorrow over their actions. In the Eridu Genesis tablet, after the flood, Enlil is depicted as realizing the consequences of his decision and feeling remorseful. In the book of Genesis, God is described as regretting having created humanity due to their wickedness, leading to the decision to bring about the flood. Parallels in the themes of divine restraint and regrets between the Hebrew Bible and the Eridu Genesis tablet highlight shared motifs within ancient Near Eastern literature. They reflect a common recognition of the complexity of divine actions and the consequences that follow, as well as a consideration of the relationship between deities and humanity. Divine Instructions for Building the Ark The parallels between the Hebrew Bible, specifically the book of Genesis, and the Eridu Genesis tablet primarily revolve around the themes of divine instructions for building an ark and the impending flood. 1. In the book of Genesis, God instructs Noah to build an ark to save himself, his family, and a selection of animals from a worldwide flood. The detailed instructions provided by God include the dimensions, construction materials, and the ark's purpose for preservation. 2. Similarly, the Eridu Genesis tablet is an ancient Mesopotamian text 
that describes a great flood and a divine figure instructing a man named Zayusudra to build a boat. Zayusudra is given specific instructions regarding the construction of the boat, including its dimensions and the materials to be used. The purpose of the boat is also to preserve living beings during the flood. The Release of Birds The parallels between the Hebrew Bible's Genesis account and the Eridu Genesis tablet primarily revolve around the motif of the release of birds as a means of determining the state of the flooded world. Here's a closer look at these parallels. 1. The Flood Narrative The Genesis Flood Account Genesis chapter 6 verse 9 and the Eridu Genesis tablet describes a great flood that covers the earth, destroying all living beings except for a select few who are saved. 2. Sending out birds In both narratives, birds are sent out to determine if the flood waters have receded and if dry land has appeared. In the Genesis account, Noah releases a raven and later a dove from the ark. Genesis chapter 8 verse 6 through 12. Similarly, in the Eridu Genesis tablet, the hero Ziusudra releases three birds, a dove, a swallow, and a raven. 3. The Order of Birds There is a difference in the order in which the birds are sent out between the two accounts. In Genesis, Noah first releases a raven, which continues flying back and forth until the waters dry up. Then, he sends out a dove, which returns to the ark twice before finally bringing back an olive leaf. In the Eridu Genesis tablet, Ziusudra sends out a dove first, which finds no resting place and returns. Next, he releases a swallow, which also returns. Finally, he releases a raven, which does not return, indicating that the waters have receded. Some argue that the overall narratives and theological contexts of the Genesis Flood account and the Eridu Genesis tablet are distinct. The Genesis account focuses on God's covenant with Noah and the preservation of humanity, while the Eridu Genesis tablet emphasizes the actions of the gods and the survival of Ziusudra. The Rainbow Covenant The parallels between the Hebrew Bible's account of the Rainbow Covenant in Genesis and the Eridu Genesis tablet are worth exploring. While both texts share common themes, they are said to be distinct narratives from different cultural and religious contexts. 1. In the Hebrew Bible, the Rainbow Covenant is described in Genesis chapter 9 verse 8 through 17. After the Great Flood, God establishes a covenant with Noah and his descendants, promising never again to destroy the earth with a flood. As a sign of this covenant, God sets a rainbow in the sky. 2. The Eridu Genesis Tablet, on the other hand, is an ancient Mesopotamian text that predates the Hebrew texts that contain a creation myth and a flood story. In this text, the god Enki, also known as Ea, warns a man named Ziusudra about the impending flood and instructs him to build a boat to save himself, his family, and various animals. After the flood, Enki grants Ziusudra eternal life and establishes him in a distant place. Variations of the name can be found in different ancient texts, such as Atrahasis or Aknapashtim, which also refer to figures in flood narratives. In the Sumerian tradition, the figure who survived the Great Flood is called Ziusudra. He is described as a king of Shurupak and is the hero of the Sumerian flood myth, whereas Atrahasis can be found on the Sumerian king lists as well. Prophecies of the Future In comparing the Hebrew Bible's Book of Genesis with the Eridu Genesis in ancient Mesopotamian texts, there are some parallels that relate to prophecies of the future. Mainstream academics believe these similarities exist at a thematic level, and they do not indicate direct literary borrowing or influence between the texts. However, here at Ancient History, we do not concur. So overall, we have 1. The Flood Narrative Both the Book of Genesis and the Eridu Genesis contain accounts of a great flood that destroys humanity. In both narratives, the event is seen as a divine punishment for human wrongdoing. While the specific details and characters differ between the two accounts, the general concept of a flood as a means of divine judgment is a common theme. 2. Divine Revelation of the Future In the book of Genesis, God communicates with Noah, informing him of the coming flood and instructing him to build an ark to save his family and representatives of all living creatures. This divine revelation provides knowledge about the future and enables Noah to prepare accordingly. 3. Similarly, 
In the Eridu Genesis, the god Enki communicates with the Mesopotamian king Atrahasis, revealing his plan to send a flood as a means of divine retribution. Enki instructs Atrahasis to build a massive boat, not an ark, to save himself, his family, and various animals. 4. In both accounts, the future is revealed through divine communication allowing the chosen individuals to prepare and survive the catastrophic event. As we delve deeper into these ancient enigmas, the curtain of time remains impenetrable, leaving us mesmerized by the echoes of shared mythos. The parallels between Eridu and Genesis transport us to an era of divine grandeur as we marvel at the mysterious connections binding humanity's earliest sagas, like ancient whispers from distant realms. These parallel tales beckon us to unravel the tapestry of human belief and ponder the unfathomable origins of our collective history. Unravel we will, but until next time.